So last time I showed you how to use input boxes and buttons and to populate a div with, with your response. Now uh, when you guys are working on your text adventure game, um, one big question that students ask me is how do you use one function to track where the user is, give them different responses depending on how, uh, where they are in the game, and, and that because, yeah, if we have this right here, it is nice to meet you so-and-so, and this is the beginning of our game. Uh, how do we move forward from that? And so uh, there's a couple different ways we can do this. Uh, but I'm going to show you what I think is the most efficient way. Uh, so right now, we have this, and we've, we've, we can keep our variables input box and content box, and uh, we're going we're gonna to use if-else statements to direct what response the user gets. And we can just keep the same input box and same button. It's just an input box and a button that says enter. Um, but we can change up what the question is and what the response is. Uh, so for an example, I'm going to uh, I'm going to have a really quick and simple um, guessing game that I'm going to uh, have you guys make. And so um, I'm going to make a new variable and I'm going to call it uh, step and I'm going to make it equal to um, the number one. Now you could also change that to a string if you want um, and call it welcome. Uh, as you'll see it doesn't really matter. All, it, all it's going to do is change what we check it, check the value to be. Um, for this purpose I'm going to keep it as a number, step one. Uh, now inside here um, I'm going to keep this variable here because every time you run the form I want to grab the value of that input box. Uh, but what I'm going to do next is have an if statement and I'm going to check what value step is. So if step is equal to 1 then I'm going to have it do this. Now these ones, I'm actually going to keep them at the bottom of my form because uh, I want it to clear my input box and focus the input box um, at the every time we run the function anyways. Uh, it doesn't matter what step we're on. But now that we're here, uh, if step w equals 1, it's going to send that. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase my step by 1. Now if I make step plus equals 1, that means it's going to take whatever step is at and increase it by 1. All right, You can see um, for other purposes you could have it increased by 2 or by 3, um, but again we're not setting it to 1, we're increasing it plus equals 1. All right. Um, now uh, what I probably also want to add to this is my next question. So my next question I'm going to have content box inner HTML. Now if I do plus equals here, then it's going to add on to what the content I put in initially. And first I want to have an extra line. Now the, we're going to put an HTML tag. You can actually put HTML right in here. Uh, this is a break, ta break tag that will add an additional line break uh, before the next content. So I'm going to say pick a number between 1 and 10. Okay. Now before we go any further, let's just uh, see how that works. Alright, so here we are. It has, what is your name? It looks exactly the same as we had it before. Um, let's pick a name. It is nice to meet you. Pick a number between 1 and 10. So we can see that it's done that. All right, now we're ready for the next step. So now that I've increased step by one, after it's done this, we know that its step is now going to equal two. All right. Now if I type something else in now before changing my code or doing anything else, let's pick a number. It doesn't do anything differently. It doesn't replace this content. It looks like it might actually run this, but it's not. It's just not replacing the content because uh, if step is not no longer equal to 1, so it won't enter here. Uh, so let's add in there, else if, 
step equals two. All right. So now I'm going to pick, have it pick a random number uh, between one and ten. All right. So let's make a new random number. And it's using math dot random. And uh, I'm going to use an integer. So I'm going to make it. I'm going to do a parse int to make it an integer. Um, and if uh, if you haven't made random numbers in JavaScript before, math dot random that function right there it generates a random number, but it's a real number. So it's a decimal number, and it's between zero and one. Uh, it's it's like zero decimal. You know, and it's got a whole bunch of uh, decimals after that. Um, and just to show you what I mean, um, let's just do an alert, and you can see you can see what I'm talking about. Right there, zero decimal seven six four one five, etc. That's totally unusable for us. Uh, unless we do a little math functions to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by 10. That just moves our decimal over to the right one and then use parse int which cuts off the rest of uh, the well, the rest of the numbers. So it makes it an integer, not a decimal. Um, so let's let's do that. So parse int, that's a function that turns that into a, an integer. And before I do that, I'm going to multiply the math.random by 10. Now that we've got a random number, let's check if what they entered is um, the same as random number. Now remember, input value, um, that's going to grab the value of the input box. Um, but as soon as we grab it, it's not necessarily a number. But let's just check. Let's check the if the type is the same. So if uh, random number oops, is equal to input value, then we're going to put into the content box, wow, you got it right. Lucky guess. Else, oh, and I misspelled random number. Else, Too bad. The number I picked was, and then we can put in there random number. Okay. Now, just just so that we can also know what uh, data type their input is, because if we want, if we're using three equal signs, then uh, it's going to check not only the value but also the data type. So let's go plus equals and on a new line data type of input and if we put type of and then input value that's going to print out what the data type is of what they enter. That way we can verify that uh, we're, we've got the right data type and this is going to work. Let's refresh. Pick a number between 1 and 10. Too bad the number I picked was 1. Data type of input, string. So even though we typed a number, the number 4, it's still a string data type, which means even if it, the random number was 4, it wouldn't have um, said that we got it right. So what we need to do is, we can do it right here, is check if it is equal to the parse int version of input value. So we can put the parse int right into our if condition right here and then we're going to have um, we're going to make sure that it's the same data type because we know that the random number is an integer. We've done it right there. Let's also parse the input value as an integer and then we can make sure that it's correct. So let's refresh this 
pick a number between 1 and 10. I'm going to pick 5. Oh, it picked 0. All right. Now, because this step is, we haven't increased step, we can actually continue to uh, put in more numbers, and it will just keep on going. Hey, I got it. There we go. So what we could do down here is even say, try again. And there you can see that just using step, we can have it do different things all within the same function. We're all doing this inside of one function. Um, you can see for your text adventure game, if you wanted to have them go into different rooms or different scenarios, all you have to do is change that vet variable. And uh, just to show you that uh, we can do it as a string as well, we can change it to welcome if step is equal to oops, welcome. We just we wouldn't be able to do the plus equals one because it's no longer a number. We would just have to go uh, step two. If step equals step two, etc., you could do the same thing, but instead have this be center room and change it to north room if they go north, etc. And that's that's how you use one function with an input box and have it do different things based on the response.